In today's video, I'm going to share with you seven items that you should not take to a state park, or any park for that matter. I've been working on this video for over a year, not not making the video, but I have been collecting the footage from several different parks over the past year. So you'll notice that in the video coming up, you'll see different locations that I use throughout this video. I've spoke of this several times in some of my videos that when I go to a state park or just anywhere out in the wild, I want to believe that I found this secret spot I've, uh, no one ever has been there before and then when I look around it saddens me when I see items that have been left behind by someone else you know all parks public lands state city national they all have rules and regulations and we never think about reading them prior to visiting that park but um, we really should each park is different and each park has their own rules and regulations. The rules and regulations are to protect the natural resources and the relics of that area. They're not only to protect the park, but they're also to, to protect the people that visit the parks. And in my opinion, all these items that I'm gonna show you or talk about should really be left at home. The very first one is chainsaws. You know when you enter a park and part of your camping gear is a chainsaw, but you did not bring any firewood along? Guess what the first thought is gonna go to a ranger's mind. Yeah, you plan on cutting down some trees for some firewood or cutting some branches. It's a controversial issue because um, each agency is different so you must find out the rules and regulations before um, visiting a park and I you know and I can say or public land um, there is instances where it may be legal to cut down a Christmas tree but not cut a tree for firewood or you may also have um, obtained a permit or a tag together <clears throat> firewood or wood for personal use this brings me to the topic of gathering firewood there are locations that prohibit it and the signs usually indicate no gathering of firewood however in this next clip I'm going to show you um, it is permissible to gather firewood Okay, um, you know, you always want to read the, the signs and get on the internet, but this is one of those indications where you could gather dead and down is authorized. So this is removing or attempting to remove any live plants or vegetation. It's prohibited. Dead and down is authorized. So that's telling me we could gather firewood is it not so we read, read the signs don't just assume that you can gather firewood or don't assume that you can't because right here it says you can interesting so here's a bunch of dead and down limbs dead and down that's the operative word that's dead, but it's not down. So, just gather what's on the ground. This brings me to number two, metal detectors. This might not be an issue at some parks, like a city or county park, but there are many parks, national and state, that do not allow metal detectors. I have to admit, what is the harm in metal detecting? But we have to remember and respect the reasons that these parks have established this rule in the first place. The National Park's motto is to preserve the land and to protect it for the enjoyment and the education for future generations. 
since being born in Texas, I know that it is an offense for a person to operate a metal detector in a Texas state park unless authorized by a permit. Once again, here a permit can be obtained. However, I was not able to find it listed on their facts page on their website. But I did find an interesting website, Metal Detecting Responsibility. It provides a list of each state, so you can check out the regulations and rules there at that website. Just be aware, the next time that you take your metal detector to a park, it could be illegal. Check with each park on the rules and regulations. It may be easy to obtain a permit. Number three, drones. Yes, I know, I have a drone, but there are rules and regulations that go along with owning a dr drone. Um, it's a new hobby and it's fun to do, but there is also new issues that authorities are having to govern. Not only are their parks themselves having to consider the rules concerning drones, it is also regulated by the FAA. Yes, drones have regulations just as aircrafts. So before purchasing one or flying one, be sure that you read and understand the FAA regulations and also check with the park. It might be just as easy as obtaining a permit. But also remember when you do fly a drone that you have a camera and you can be invading other people's space. So just be aware of that. Number four, fireworks. You think that some things are obvious of what not to take to a park full of several hundred people. But not only are they loud for people, most pets are deeply disturbed by them. Sammy Jo being one of them and she gets so upset and she shivers and pants <laughs> uncontrollably really. Knowing this I don't take her to parks that allow them but to have to endure fireworks when they are restricted is me having to withstand someone not following the rules. The next three items are not prohibited by law in any park that I'm aware of but I am a firm believer that you should not take these outside of your home. These three items cause a horrible mess and they're almost impossible to clean up. They're not conducive to the motto of pack it in and pack it out. Once the fun is over and the park is emptied of its visitors it's time for the park staff and volunteers to make sure that the park is enjoyable for the next visitor. As being a park host in the past, I've cleaned up these next three items and as I mentioned, they're very hard to pick up and it can take hours and hours to clean up one campsite. So number five on the list is silly string. I don't know why you would want to take this to a state park but I have cleaned it up in a cabin and outside of a cabin. Once silly string sticks in the grass or sticks to an object, um, it, it basically has to be scraped off. Once it lands in the grass and it dries, it breaks into little bitty pieces. Next item is water balloons. This is another fun item and I get it. I get that if you go on a hot summer day, you can take water balloons for the kids or the, take balloons. They can fill them up and that's the best time ever, but the problem is people leave and they leave the remnants of the balloons behind. Very time consuming picking up water balloons or shreds of water balloons. Number seven, colored eggs and confetti eggs. Um, I've spent, I can't tell you how many hours, so this one personally is the one I hate the most. Just imagine confetti all over your backyard and then add some rain. Now try to pick up every little piece of paper. Oh, and don't forget the tiny pieces of colored eggs. <laughs> yeah, I've spent hours and hours and hours picking up 
one campsite. And that was one ranger and one volunteer and I can't tell you how long it took us. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, click the subscribe button if you haven't already. And also click the bell if you want to get notified of my next video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.